Women's Interfaith Network was launched in 2003 and the whole purpose of the organisation is to bring women together from all different religions, from all the different communities, to build bridges and to talk about what they want for the future. I think events like this are important because it's about women coming together, amplifying our voices, getting some great issues on the agenda and just building links and bridges. The issue of women in power particularly interests me because I'm fascinated by the women who are often left out or marginalised and how we can bridge the gap. When it comes to the gender debate and ensuring that we have a more equal society, one could argue that we're living in exciting and positive times. It feels like there's a moment where <coughs> outside of the traditional corridors of power there's just a lot of ruptures and movement and I think the potential is so exciting. The women's marches this year, not just through the streets of Washington but through the streets of London, have been bigger than ever because women have understood that if anyone is going to try to strengthen and ensure the rights of women, it will have to be women themselves. Whether you're a man or a woman, you absorb a lot, I think, from the established traditions and, and way of doing things. Mm -hmm. In the situation you're in, in the society you're in, in many Arab countries, there is now a majority of households in which the breadwinner is a woman. The subject of women in power is an integral part of the story of secularization in the Arab and the Islamic world 200 years ago, and yet until today, that story has major challenges. The story of women in that is crucial. A lot has to change about the way the society is structured in order to allow both men and women to take part in society and to encourage women to come forward. But no one will give that to women. Women have to fight for it. Often, women will open a comment with, I'm sorry, this may sound stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, Absolutely. You never hear a man say that. Yeah. Mm. If a woman is allowed to maintain her intuitive powers, her bonding powers, her desire to maintain peace and unity. So if women were at the table, maybe check things would change. I truly believe that sometimes the questions we ask are more important than the answers, and they certainly are important in trying to find the answers. So tonight left me with a lot of hope. Yes, there are clearly problems, but there was a sense of positivity, optimism that things are beginning to change, that there are movements afoot which are really, to some extent, empowering women, giving women a greater voice, and making all of us more aware of how much we still need to do and to change. I found it really interesting because I've got a 17-year-old daughter and to think about the future for her and where she'll be in 30 years' time in terms of positions of power. Um, yeah, really, really engaging. Tonight's debate was very interesting because when I go to Africa, I can see the different kind of empowerment women have as compared to Europe. So it applied to me in terms of the context of what we were discussing. As a journalist, I am forever persuaded that the more you talk to people face to face, the more you begin not to deepen your own view, and even better, to change your view. And maybe we're inspired a little bit here in Britain by the fact that it's a hundred years since British women were not given the right to vote, they fought for the right to vote. And so, there's a bit of a fighting spirit in the air.